I'm going to do a little bit of different something here, folks. True crime with terrible sight. Unfortunately, my due recorder somehow got erased. Now I'm pissed off. I don't know how that happened. But. What the hell? People putting trash in my fucking yard. <clears throat> but this is doing a little bit of um, going over the Delphi mother interview. Or Delphi, sorry. Delphi. Um, I took some of the most parts of the story that I wanted to go over. Um, things she did say. Uh, I did have questions, but I could not watch the full video. I had to watch it another day. <clears throat> so I did get in the question, um, but it didn't get answered it didn't I think I might have got erased but another fine interview by Jason Hebert but um what I wanted to know about was the road near the bridge where the girls went missing and if if that uh, road I'm still on that road due to the fact that what I heard on this interview you know Really got me thinking. Just really got me thinking. And due to the fact that this, you know, interview and how it went down and everything, the, oh man, it, it that road still tells me something. And I did ask in the um if uh on a comment, but like I said, it didn't get answered, and I don't believe they kept it on the comment box, but what I wanted to know if, uh, if that road was used by the killer, which I know the person that, there's someone that's always saying that that road is, I mean, the, um, killer walked in the trail at the beginning and walked out, but what I don't understand Um, is that the, uh, is that, um, if he walked in and out, but yet he got enough time to bring the girls across the brook now, mind you, and not get wet, like I said in one of my last previous videos about him being wet, if anybody's seen him wet. Or anybody walking around wet at the waist, at least the pant leg, shoes. And that wasn't even mentioned in this interview. And I asked if they maybe used the road in, uh, to throw off the um, search. But somehow they, you know, used the brook as a cover up. Because one thing that was very interesting in this interview was there was 50 people, 50 people, supposedly around that trailer at that time. And if this person happened to have brought the girls across the creek, all right, how did not one person or anybody not see a wet pant man? Or anything of the unordinary. You know how your shoes get wet and they get squishy while you walk? And believe me, I've had wet shoes a lot of times throughout my life. And them take a long time to dry up, people. Very long time. So for that being said, no one out of the 50 witnesses didn't see a man wet nor with wet shoes on a trail coming in, coming out, whatever the case may be. That to me is disturbing. That to me is definitely a cover-up on something. 
the mother also had said in the interview, if anybody wants to watch it, that a family completely disappeared because one guy said bridge guy looked like his brother and his brother went to jail the following year or something. Which that to me says how in the hell did a family get up and disappear and you know who the hell did the interview for this and if they did the interview for this how in the hell did the guy and the family just disappear and not know who the hell he is and where the family could have been their name literally know nothing so that to me is bizarre and for them to just get up and disappear without a trace and nobody knowing bear with me a moment let the pug in but you know this person and this family disappearing and nobody not knowing where the hell they went that's bizarre to me that that just don't make no damn sense and that was something I wrote down. I wrote stuff down to remember. It was like I had a lot of stuff and, and questions of my own. Uh, someone says about the crime scene <clears throat> being, you know, strange. The mother in the interview goes into saying the body, uh, saying bodies couldn't have been moved, then brought back. So supposedly the bodies are moved and brought back. Supposedly, right, was brought onto this guy's property. And she goes on to say, now this place where the bodies were found was pretty remote. I'm, I'm thinking it was wooded area on the land. And she said that she went there, saw the property, looked around. And for someone to say that they were moved and brought back, that was impossible, she said, to have happened. I mean, I do think this mother is really up in the air with a lot of things, really up in the air with a lot of questions of mine. But the way these things, like I say, uh, but never mentions for, oh, no, that's nothing. That I made a mistake on. Um, but, you know, she goes on to say about a bunch of stuff that, I mean, yeah, she was at work or something that day, so... <clears throat> to me, it sounds like this woman's getting the runaround. Literally, the runaround. <clears throat> she does mention sex slaving. Now, on another couple cases I covered, there was a couple kids that I think the first, um, that Josh kid that first went on the milk carton, I believe he was into, brought into sex slaving. She mentioned sex slaves. She's yelling at people, stop posting things on Facebook because of, um, you could get picked up for sex slaving. But for any, whatever reason why this sex slaving is on the table, to me, is just another cover-up thing. Just to blow off the investigation, just for something to, you know, stall the investigation. That's what I think. Because it's still on the table, I think the mother said in the video, you know, it's like, what? why are they even, the bodies were found. So who does sex slaving and leaves the kids dead and don't use them is beyond me. So I don't know why that's still on the table. Uh, one of the girls did have a Facebook. And that's where a lot of, and I just, my wife just looked this up the other day. I mean, last week, sometime last week or the beginning of the week before, she read me a post that someone posted on Facebook that don't put your location of your daughter's school or your son's school, don't put your location of this and that on Facebook because there's people out there, right, that search these locations. They find out where they go to school. They take a picture that you send your kid off for your first day of, say, high school or first day of middle school, and you post it. They look for, the, they take the picture, they screenshot it, they look for the kid at the school, and then they kidnap them, kidnap them for sex leaving. I guess that's how they do it. One of the girls, the mother said, 
secretly did a, uh, a um, Facebook page. <clears throat> and I believe, and I got a reason to the bum, but of a doubt that she was stalked. Not by sex slavers, but I think by someone that is local in town. I mean, this, this is a case of someone being real close, too close for comfort. Um, then she goes on to say the mother says that there's like a bunch of men in the town that dress the same as Bridge Guy. Now that's insane. If you got a bunch of men dressing like that guy, then you got a bunch of um, middle-aged men who uh, are <laughs> dressing very poorly and looking very, you know, suspicious in my eyes because, you know, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. If you're dressing like that in one town, someone's very bored with themselves. I mean, it's insane to even think that I mean, yeah, you got your trends and stuff, but you know what? I'm the type of person that always have put my own style, which ain't great, but I don't care, and I don't copy nobody. I remember back in the day, everybody tried to dress like everybody. You in school, this kid dressed like him, he dressed like you, you got twins here, you got people over there, they look like this, and no, that wasn't me, I always wore my own style. <laughs> And to find out this town got a bunch of men that look like bridge guy and dress the same way. You're put, picking a needle out of a haystack, I, this woman makes it sound like. But I don't know. <clears throat> the buddy system she spoke of. The mo- now, I'm not trying to put down nobody. I'm not trying to make anybody. All right? Don't get me wrong, but name shaming or, you know downgrading no but if you know I I always say man today's kids ain't got the street smarts they I mean you can tell them all day about the buddy system or you can tell them all day about you better do this so you better do that and in this case unfortunately and sadly nothing worked you know, the girl snuck out and got a, a Facebook page. One of the girls had a secretly boyfriend. But, you know, he was cleared of everything. There was no cheese living a good life, the mother said. But still, this secrecy stuff, my son's still doing it to this day. Like the one I always speak of with the mental health. And I do try to tell him every day, like a parent, if you get into a predicament, you cannot solve or you cannot or it feels very dangerous I told him to run like a bat out of hell and run to a public place unfortunately these girls didn't stay around locally in town they like to go wander off in the wooded areas and you know it ain't a bad thing you know you shouldn't be you know stalled in life of your independence you should be but you know what gets me seriously about this case is that um if they had the street smarts, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to downgrade nobody. She did the best she could to acknowledge her kids, but if they had the street smarts and that guy told them down the hill, all right, you got two kids that were athletically in sports, and you got this fat looking stupid bridge guy. Probably is middle aged and overweight. He does look overweight. He does look middle aged and he's probably out of shape. I'll tell you, if I was a kid with my street smarts and my knowledge, if I have today as I had as a kid, I would have ran down that hill as fast as I could and then I would have ran off to the right and then ran up the hill. And if that fat bastard was chasing me, you know, I had that happen to me once. And it wasn't, I was getting kidnapped to chase. It was due to the fact that I was um, throwing snowballs, doing something stupid. I hit some guy's window. And me and my friends, and he had a, his window open, mind you, just enough to smoke a cigarette. You see the smoke coming out, right? 
So we were lucky enough to hit the window with the crack. <laughs> Snow went in. You son of a bitch. Pulled into our street. We were all on a roof. He's going to fucking kill us, he said. And I jumped off a, a roof. I stepped into the garage. The people, I knew the people, but it was nighttime. I wasn't even supposed to be on their property, but I knew the people. But I stepped on a rake. It smacked me in the face like a freaking cartoon. I turned around. And the, I, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe he took off down the street, but he was down near the friggin' um, walkway because I had steps that go down near the fence. Now, picture this. There's a, a little um, hallway-type little pathway in two, between two houses, my house and the house behind me. Now, up the fence, I thought he was gone, went the other way, but he wasn't. The guy was standing right there on the steps. So I ran in between the houses. He started pursuit. Gonna kick my ass, boy. If that man was, that man literally was six foot two, probably like 250 pounds. And who was he pissed? And I took a, now picture this, you're going through this little pathway. You could take a right out to the road on a straightaway driveway, or you can take a, I mean a left out the road on a straightaway driveway. You could take a right up a hill on railroad ties. And because I took that you know, step a lot of times when I was a kid up them railroad ties. I had that down pat. It did have snow on it. But boom, three, four stride steps up that. He almost grabbed my leg. But because it was railroad ties and he wasn't known of the area, the guy friggin' pull slipped, fell right on his fucking face. And I got up off them damn things, turned down the road, man. I was gone on the railroad tracks. I didn't go home till like an hour later. But um, if these girls, I'm sorry, had proper street smarts like me, like that, they would have ran down there, ran to the left, up into the leaves, and it looked like it got really leafy around there. It was out there. Um, they would have ran up that hill, and that guy probably would have fell on his face. But, um, like I said, I was wondering if they, um, threw off the search by using that road because 50 people out there at that time and not one person saw a man coming out of the friggin', and that's another thing, if them girls could have ran from that guy and got up the hill, they could have started texting somebody instead of recording they should have been texting. You know, that would be my thing. I see a strange person. I got an eerie feeling. I mean, but they're saying that they could have known the person or it was a local person. And they felt safe around this person, maybe. But I tell you, a text would have done real wonders. Not recording a voice, but texting. Hey, I'm here on the bridge. Someone's here. And I don't feel safe. That's what they should have done. That's where the real street smarts comes in. If you, you know, I just thought that up the other night when I was thinking about going over all this after I watched the video. So it was like, why didn't they text somebody if they, you know? But other than that, I think someone stalked their Facebook page though. And, yeah, these days you don't want to be putting up pictures and locations. I mean, yeah, you could put up pictures, but no locations. <laughs> but, I mean, every other like, this is a sad time, and I hope one day that they do catch this son of a bitch. It's sick. But, um, them are some of the things that caught my eye. And that road, man, I think something has really something to do with that road. Because for 50 people to see Bridge Guy and they claim they saw him coming up with different sketches. And I just can't get it out of my freaking head about that river, the brook. If he went across that brook like they say, then someone had to have gotten wet. And he should have gotten wet. And that should have been right there. Someone should have said, well, look at this guy with his wet shoes. That right there would have got him right away. And then that witness, I saw that man with the wet shoes. He did it. And, but nope, nothing's coming out of this. It's like it's it's stopped in time. And people are stopped with 
um, their mouths sewn shut because they don't want to get involved. I don't know. I don't know, but these are some real, you know, questions that if I would have had time to been there, I would have been asking them, but I didn't get the time. But this is what I got out of that interview. And it's some crazy shit, though, man. All this stuff. Stuff that you can find out about later on. And it's like, mm, what if this would have happened? That would have happened. But nope. Insane, people. But I, I, I give a huge salute. And I um, hope one day this woman and the other people, all families, get closure on this. And I hope that son of a bitch gets cut. Hopefully, vigilante justice takes its toll. Till that next video, be safe, take care, always beware. Because if you ain't got them street smarts, I'm sorry, man. You ain't going to make it in life. This ground will be your life. And that sucks to say. But, everybody, be safe. Out.